<laughs> yeah, but, you know, before you start, just well, look we into the camera and tell us the court reporter who. Well, that's what I asked here. before. Yeah, Should I have them do it before they present? On the left, just before I present or after I read the stuff into the record? Whichever way you choose. Okay. okay, let me do some housekeeping and you guys can go sure. through your. Uh, sure. Okay, we're on the record. Good morning. This is the May 11, 2023 meeting of the Southern Region Board of Review. This hearing is being held via WebEx video conference at the Perry B. Durier Junior State Office Building, 250 Veterans Memorial Highway, <clears throat> rooms two and three, Hop Hog, New York, 11788. The time is now 921 and this hearing is officially open. The members of the board on WebEx is Mr. Andy Ellis and Mr. Mark Cavanaugh. I'm with us today in person, Andrew Hames, Phelan Nee, and myself, Robert Peterson, Chairman. From the Department of State is Mr. Courtney Nation. We will now hear the scheduled petitions. When you speak, please address the board and give your name, title, and legal address so that court reporter can have all the information requested. We may have to stop from time to time to consult with our technical staff. In making comments to the board, please provide a descriptive narrative on the matters referring to your exhibits to enable the court reporter to enter these into the record. The first hearing is in the matter of petition number 2023-0195. The petitioner is Mr. John Gehring. And the agreed party is Hofstra University. This petition pertains to a new four story high sprinklered mixed group, mixed use group BA3S2 occupancy building of type 1B construction classification and approximately 52,990 square feet in total gross floor area. The building is known as Hofstra University Science and Innovation Center and is located at 1000 Fulton Avenue, Town of Hempstead, County, in the County of Nassau, New York. The petitioner is seeking relief from <clears throat> 19 NYCRR Part 1221, the 2020 Building Code of New York State, Section 404.5, which states that a smoke control system shall be installed in accordance with Section 909. Exception, in all and other than Group I-2 and Group I-1, Condition 2, smoke control is not required for atriums that connect only two stories. 19 NYCRR Part 1221, the 2020 Building Code of New York State, Section 404.6, which states that atrium spaces shall be separated from adjacent spaces by a one hour fire barrier constructed in accordance with Section 707, or a horizontal assembly constructed in accordance with Section 711, or both. 19 NYCRR Part 1221, the 2020 Building Code of New York State, Section 707.6, which states that openings in a fire barrier shall be protected in accordance with section 716. Openings shall be limited to a maximum aggregate width of 25% of the length of the wall, and the maximum area of a single opening shall not exceed 150 square, 156 square feet. Openings in enclosures for exit access stairways and ramps, interior exit stairways and ramps, and exit passageways shall also comply with sections 1019, 1023.4, and 1024.5 respectively and 19 NYCRR Part 1221, the 2020 Building Code of New York State, Section 716.1.1, which allows alternative methods for determining fire protection ratings of openings, and states that the application of any of the alternative methods listed in this section shall be based on the fire exposure and acceptance criteria specified in NFPA 252, NFPA 257, UL9, UL10B, or UL10C. The required fire resistance of an opening protective shall be permitted to be established by any of the following method or procedures. Number one, designs documented in approved sources. Number two, calculations performed in an approved manner. Number three, engineering analysis based on a comparison of opening protective designs, having fire protection ratings as determined by the test procedures set forth in NFPA 252, NFPA 257, UL9, UL10B, or UL10C, and number four, alternative protection methods as allowed by section 104.3. Ramps and exit passageways shall also comply with sections 1019, 1023.4, and 1024.5 respectively. The petitioner does not wish to install a smoke control system, but wishes to install a fire curtain system as an alternative to the fire barrier and opening protectives that are typically prescribed by the code for protection of atriums. There's a mouthful. <clears throat> okay, gentlemen, you have our attention. Did you want a uh, residential address when we- uh, Yeah, please. 
My name is Richard Letty. I'm the uh, assistant vice president of engineering construction and central utilities at Hofstra University. And my responsibility is to oversee the capital projects um, at the school of new construction. Uh, this particular building is uh, going to house our school of nursing inaugural undergraduate class and uh, some of our engineering labs. It's critical to us that we uh, open this building in September because we don't have any place to put these new undergraduate students that are coming in. As we're aware, the pandemic here, nursing is critical to our communities. And uh, we're also projected that in the next several years, there's going to be a drop. About 25% of the existing employed nurses are going to be retiring. So, Hofstra is trying to help fill that gap, trying to get this nursing store open. With that, we hired HLW architects. So, Tom Turner is the, uh, the lead architect. Ed Stan is one of the principals, and John Gehring is a senior, uh, senior architect. We've also retained uh, Alan Engineering as a consultant to do the MEP, fire protection, things of that nature. We, we have successfully worked with these two teams on several large projects on the campus, first being the School of Medicine building that we built back in 2012. One, the next one was the School of Business building that was built in uh, 2017. <coughs> This current project, they've done other projects, but these are the three main projects. They were all very, very successful, safe projects. We have a high level of confidence in this team. That's why we went back to them several times for future work. But with that, I'll turn it over to, to Tom. Good morning, Tom Turner, senior architect, senior project architect at HLW. Uh, give me the residential address. I live in New Jersey. No, it's a business address. Okay. Business address. We're a five pen plaza in New York City. Wonderful. Um, as uh, as Rich mentioned, I'm the senior PA on the job. I've been working on the project for a little over two years now. I've got about 25 years of experience, uh, primarily in resident in uh, uh, academic projects, working on multiple campuses throughout the East Coast, being part of our at many locations. So. Um, I was planning on giving a little background on the building, but since you already sort of did that, pretty much fully versed in what we're trying to accomplish to be new four story construction. You understand sort of the, the building type and the building use group. And the, the, what this issue really boils, boils down to was that part three of meeting the code um, by using an engineering job. What we feel we've introduced here is a product that I've used on past projects. I've used it very successfully in New York City and a couple other locations working. Can, who's the manufacturer of this curtain? Um, and the product that they introduced is not tested by UL10B or UL10C. It was tested in UL10D. We realized you realized at some point during the project that that does not meet the code uh, as of right. And when we, that was brought to our attention, we went into re, uh, doing a little research on finding out how we can make this code compliant. Um, McKeon has gone to great lengths hiring third party engineering judgments to prove that this product not only meets, but actually exceeds UL 10B, um, with this curtain product as opposed to 10B, which I think is more common to use for metal or like a, a metal, uh, metal gate system. Uh, and therefore we feel that this product meets the nature of the code and provides a, a building which is not only so meeting the code that actually exceeds it. That's sort of the, the the real crux of I think this meeting is, and that's really the point we want to sort of concentrate on is that okay. by proving that this engineering judgment is done by a third party, which was neutral, proof it exceeds it. We've got a CCR report that also shows that it's done compliance with meeting all the codes because of the past history of this product used on other products, uh, other projects in other jurisdictions. We feel it's got a proven track record and we feel it's uh, worthy of. Uh, uh, Courtney, do we have the ability to put the exhibits on a screen to kind of walk through the building section where the fire curtain is going to go? I think that's right. Be, before we do that, yeah. could you just, uh, well, yeah, uh, one correction I might 
we read early on, we talked about the uh, gross square footage of the building. Uh, 529. 52 yeah. I think on one of the plans, it shows it's up around 70 uh, something. Yeah, 529 being low. I think yeah. it's 70. 70. Four and change, 75 and change, something. Yeah, like just for the record. Yeah, what's the correct number? What is that one for saying? That that was a number on their application for is that GFA or is that a different calculation? Sometimes uh calculations I, get I believe the usable is closer to 75. Yeah. I think 75 is the gross square footage of the building. The usable space is, is less than that. So that may have, the 52 might have been used. Yes. Yeah, so in, in the, the record here that I read into, it says gross floor area at 52,990. Yeah, that should be 70, 70 something. That, yeah, I believe that's correct. 72, yeah. let me just see what yeah. it says. It's probably the 52 management class. Which one is that on? G040? Yeah. Hold on, this thing takes a while to refresh. Oh, right here. Hold on. Also, uh, 74 74 204 204 okay thank you so you will stay the the um the code compliance research report that we have supporting evidence seems to suggest that it uh, conforms to um, all of these UL listings Including can be. Did you read that wrong? That's the CCR report. Yeah. Um, which is like 10 years ago, right? I'm surprised it's not. It has a renewal date of 6 30, 2023. It has an issue date of 6 12, 2022. Page one. Okay. Yeah, I think the report said it complies with 10B, but uh, and complies with 10C, except for the host stream test. Correct. So the curtain was tested under UL 10D. The CCR report yeah. cites that it was it was tested under UL 10D, and well as complying with 10B, 10C, and well 1784. I'll be honest, I don't know exactly what that is. Uh, if you don't mind, can we dig into the details of the location, sure. the size, and how you would still? Uh... Exit the building. I think the first one to bring up very quickly would be sort of the how do I get this up on the screen? Share screen. Uh, Lolo, can, can you please share screen? I think that's cool. Uh, okay. Yeah, you, you can you can just go uh, share over at the bottom. Uh, at the top uh, three from the top, you see share. I have to try what's on the screen up there. Share is on the top left, the third one over. But we're not seeing that screen on here. You have to go to your. Yes. Oops. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Share. We can still walk through it. There's a small way. It's getting in. Yeah. <laughs> I got you. I'm not sure. That's a good question. Yeah. John, can you confirm you can see the screen? Uh, yes, I can. I can see it. Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, so here's, here's two cutaways of the same stair. Um, this is basically a four story communicating stair that sort of telegraphs its way up through the building. Um, important to note this is not an egress stair, it's not part of the egress calculation. It's a communicating stair, it's a convenient stair, it's got a bunch of different uh, ways that we address it, but it is not part of the egress strategy. How do the people using the building know that? No exit signs? No exit signs for one. Yeah, <laughs> if they're using it every day, 
They're most familiar with that. The they're familiar with those stairs. Sure, they're no, gonna, they're gonna assume it's a egress. We realize it can be used to egress, but my point was that it's not critical to the occupant mode getting them off the floors. Well, understand the quote required yeah. exit stairs. Exactly. Yeah. We've also I'm sorry. Um, egress stairs. Someone wants I to can't see him speaking right now. So we should state our yeah, name yeah, before yeah, when we speak. I just guess. state your name before you speak so that the court reporter can. Got it. Okay. Uh, this is Tom Turner speaking. Uh, the okay. image you see up on the screen right now, it's two cutaways of uh, a portion of the building. The one on the top left is an exterior view looking into the building. So you can see this stair is very much a common architectural feature of the building. The one on the right is cut from the opposite direction, and you can see how the stair sort of marches its way up to the four floors. The areas in pink are obviously occupiable. The area that's blotted out in white is sort of the public domain of the building. You see how the stair knits together the four floors. The sort of concept behind this is not only for convenience, but it's also for technical interaction, and there are portions of the stairs from floors one to two that have little seating areas as a way to sort of students to hang and congregate before and after classes. But uh, the next image I'll share for a pure section of the building. Very quickly, here's what the building looks like fully rendered from the exterior. There's sort of an architectural detail of the function of the stair and what the purpose of the stair is, just as I mentioned, from floors one to two. Not only does it serve as a way of communicating from floor to floor, but it provides opportunities for seating and congregating uh, with fellow students. There's another picture of it from a little bit from the first just, floor level. Just from my own knowledge, yep. you only need a handrail on one side? You only need the handrail on one side. Awesome. Yes. Um, and we, we've done this architectural feature. We've all seen these in yeah. lots of buildings. They're super popular in colleges because of the very nature of the students and the occupants that use them. So I don't think we're reinventing any architectural, you know, new, uh, themes or terminology. We just want to make sure we get the code portions addressed correctly. Um, so here's more of a pure section through the building, and you can obviously see in bright orange. This is where we would be deploying this McKean product. In the case of an emergency, the McKean is tied into the Class E. This curtain deploys out of the ceiling. It drops down. Uh, and it's, it's a rolled-up product that sits in a, in a two-hour rate of construction. The housing of the curtain is completely engulfed and incorporated with two-hour rated assembly all around it. And what I mean by that is there's a header above. That's two-hour rated construction. When the when the Curtains drop down, the corners are two hour rated construction. So, when this curtain is in its fully deployed mode, we have a continuous two hour separation of all components. The curtain is rated actually for three hours as per the independent testing. And any architectural features or any architectural components that it interfaces with also is a two hour rated. And it's a UL listing depending on what that, what that construction is. So usually, it's a drywall assembly and it's UL 406 or something like that. Uh, depending on where we are. So the you, idea. I'm sorry to interrupt you. That's okay. Can you stick with this section because it's really important? I got Absolutely. a bunch of questions. Uh, but finish your thought and then. So the idea is when this curtain deploys, we have a continuous two-hour separation. Okay. That's pretty much the end of the sentence. So you, you're trying to create a two-story atrium because I think that's one of the co-triggers. So correct. That's at the first, the ground floor and the second floor, and then I guess at that point where it's the McKeon product starts. Yep. That would be a what a one hour or two hour barrier both both are two hours okay so we're basically separating we dropped the curtain on the, on the third floor and the second floor so okay. what, we, what we didn't want to do is drop it just on one floor because if you drop it on one floor that means either you have two full floors and a stairway going down to nowhere or you have two full flo two full floors and a stairway going up to nowhere so by doing it on both floors we are truly getting nothing more than just two floors okay. of exposure and you have a problem with the opening protective area, correct? That's why that's part of the variance. Are you exceeding the 156 or? No, the only 
The only problem that we perceive is that this product, because of its test UL 10 D, not B, is not as of right. And in chapter 7, I think it's 716, it gives as of right uh, testing uh, agencies that you have to meet. One of them is UL 10 B and UL 10 C. It does not have UL 10 D. All right, maybe I'm confusing things. So you're not viewing this as an opening protective, you're trying to classify as a fire barrier. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. So, so is it a fire barrier? What's the definition of a fire barrier? Does it meet the definition of a fire barrier? Because it's a retractable product, right? It is. Okay. Um, I think that's where I'm a little confused. So we're not concerned about the, the area of it because it's not an opening protective for the. I wasn't. No. Okay. From my perspective, no. The size of the opening was never an issue that we were concerned with. Okay. Um, the. The definition uh, that the chairman asked about the fire barrier is um, found in the code here, and it states, this is Gordon, by the way, a fire resistance rated wall assembly of materials designed to restrict the spread of fire in which continuity is maintained. So that doesn't strike me as a retractable device. Fire barrier isn't um, a device that is retractable. So, and then it's more of an opening protective, which would need to be what, 20 minutes? Um, yes. But not exceed 156. Right. Okay. In, in terms of the opening. And if it's an Andy uh, Ames, if it's an opening protective, then it can't be considered a fire barrier. Right, right. Yeah. It's either or. It's either or, yeah. But it, if it's an opening protective, then it's not performing the function that of splitting the floor. Well, yes. Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. I think so. Unless you got, because you said the surrounding construction is two hours. Yeah. So you just wouldn't be able to exceed the 156 unless that's part of the variance request. Yeah. Just going to architect a little bit. Please. Um, no consideration for like fire glass or anything to enclose this? Um, no. We, we, you want that open feel? Because I, in my, I think that would solve a lot of your issues. It would. I mean, we all know the fire glass is very expensive. It's very expensive. Yeah. Um, you got a really sexy building here. Though. Right. And you. You got your architect out on the second yeah. building, and we love the the notion of the energy and the noise and the, the circulation, and it adds to the. Well, we, we can't compromise life safety, I, so I think <laughs> it, that's the balance. I totally understand that. Yeah, that's the challenge of what you do, right? Yeah. Um, One of the alternatives is to um, design smoke protection for the space. And they could have it up to many yeah. stories. Was and that a consideration? What's the difficulty to do? You say smoke purge? Yeah, smoke That's control. Um, the, we're, uh, we're pretty far along. To, to put one in now after the fact would be not only cost prohibitive, we would have to completely re engineer the roof. So we didn't get into that, put it on the record or anything. So, so the path, that. sorry, Andy, the path to today. Don Am said approved. You wanted the construction. Surprise, something happened. Fire Marshal maybe picked it up. Where along the, did this come into play where we now you're well into construction? And I noticed it myself. I noticed when the product literature came in, the product was tested for UL 10D. I went back and double checked the code that said, oh, first you had this product originally in the building permit application? Okay. Yeah, okay. correct, which was already approved by the town. Okay. So I sort of raised the flag saying, oh, we have a product here that doesn't meet the letter of the law. It's UL 10D, not UL 10B. Can we get this approved? That's when I did my homework and found that, oh, look, it meets UL 10B because like third party engineering, let's just get it stamped. And like I said, I've used this on products in, in New York City. I know you're not in New York City, but you know the process in New York City to get a CCD one. I don't know if you're familiar with New York City, but it's a construction change directive. You meet with the fire marshal, you meet with building officials, and you do a whole process and say, "Here's what the law says. 
here's what we want to do, which isn't what the law says, but we think it meets it. What do you think? And they say, yeah, you're not, which is, you know, in hindsight, probably what we should have done here or at least gotten some sort of approval. Mm -hmm. But like I said, it was an error and we caught it and we brought it to everyone's attention. Uh, this is Andy. Did you ever have a fire protection engineer evaluate uh, this versus smoke control or we did anything early on? Uh, I have spoken to some professionals I work with who are fire protection engineers after the fact to sort of help guide me through this process. Like I said, we caught this pretty late in the process in the game, and obviously we want to try to remedy it as best we can with uh, the project being where it is. Um, so when working with fire protection engineer, he's given me some alternates and some advice on how to go forward. One of them was, you know, knowing that we were looking to get this variance, he said that's a viable path and we should pursue it, which is why we're open for that. Uh, did uh, what what initiates the dropping of these curtains? Uh, it's tied into the fire alarm. It's tied into the class E, so I guess it's either. Uh, Smoke detectors will kick it off, or someone pulling the. Uh, you guess. Pulling the full station, yeah. Well, let can we be specific? It's Hasn't a, that been to, as part of this design? I, I'm sure it has. I, and, the word. And, uh, maybe oh, yes, well, along the yeah. word. Where does construction stand on this? Where, how far along in construction? Uh, very far along. We we're hoping to be complete with construction. Uh, in a couple couple months. Uh, so the hardship to implement smoke control, you know, Andy had mentioned in, typically at this level, when you're looking for a fire protection type variance, we get these fire protection specialists that come in and model things right. and explain where the hardship is and the difficulty and then provide a mitigating approach. Yeah. We, um, so is there a fire protection engineer involved? Is there that kind of modeling or anything to, 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 to convey to us that it is a safe alternative right. and that, you know, we're buying we don't into have one now, but as I mentioned, I did reach out to fire protection engineers to look at that as a viable option. I've done projects where we've done smoke modeling mm -hmm. and it's a, as I'm well aware, it's a long drawn out process. It takes time and effort and energy. Um, so we, we have looked at going that route, but we were hoping to, uh, not necessarily go that route if we didn't need to, if we could get this variance to work. Okay. Now, what what happens if okay, somebody don't even have a smoke alarm, somebody pulls a fire alarm, uh, whether it's real or by accident or or whatever, uh, and people are on these stairs or on the seats on the side. Uh, the curtain drops down and you cannot get trapped in the curtain because there is a man door. There's a door with an exit sign on it that gives you exit from inside the stairwell. So let's say you're walking down the stairs, fire alarm gets pulled, curtain drops down, it drops down and I think it's, I don't know, a foot every 10 seconds or something. So it doesn't come slamming down, it slowly works its way down. But for some reason you can't get off the stairs by the time the curtain drops, there is a man door flat with an eliminated exit sign on it and you can just push your way out through. Now, does that uh, does that man door uh, impact its approval under the UL ratings? No, it's part part of the testing. It actually meets, it meets yeah, five passes per square. Foot wasn't very clear in the report. I couldn't quite understand it. It seemed to indicate that any openings would negatively impact. Uh, it, I'm more than happy to double yeah. check, but as far as I'm aware, well, the product is the product, so I believe that the man door was part of the testing. I can't imagine it wouldn't be because that's one of the main features of this is that it has the man door, so you don't run into scenarios. Yeah, exactly. that, that was not clear as part of the testing. I mean, obviously, the product can be used. Many instances, sure. as shown on some of the diagrams I had, uh, without right. Well, part of the reason why I looked at this product is, like I said, I've used it in other applications, and 
I believe the, the name of this, there's a number, I think it's E200, whatever, but it's called hyphen firefighter series. And it's exactly for that reason. So the firefighters can get into and out of the stair through this flap. Question for Courtney. Courtney, when we do these uh, transit hub variances, they do that kind of audible notification on how to exit. Yes. I don't know what it's called. Is it up? There's a formal explanation, but would you guys be amenable to something like that where some kind of announcement where don't use the open communicating stair, use the exits and sure. stuff like that? I don't know how that would work, but as an additional safety feature, um, so people don't go to this, this familiar stair to get out. This is Rich Levy speaking. Um, uh, what I believe you're, you're discussing is a, is a PA system that's more or less integrated into the fire alarm control panel so that if, uh, if the fire uh, condition exists, that it will automatically uh, give an audible output as to what the instructions are to the occupants. Yeah. And that's certainly something that we can, we can pursue. Okay. Another question I have, just one of my notes after reviewing this, uh, is there a standpipe system required for this building? Is there one being installed? There is a standpipe system uh, in the building. There's uh, one in the A staircase and there are two in the uh, B staircase. The A and the B staircase are the designated fire egress stairs. Okay, thank you. Did you guys ever consider maybe uh, trying to get this as an exit stair compliant to the code? Is that a heavy lift? Is that something that is a very unique kind of staggering? Yeah, no, I, I don't think we ever, I think in our mind, we always saw these stairs and the, and the egress stairs as two very different functional uses of the building. Mm -hmm. Egress stairs and egress stairs, we do them all the time. And this was very much an architectural feature. And we were, Knowing that this was going to be used very differently, we didn't want to get bogged down with all the requirements of the exit stair being met and having it impact the way we want the stair to be used. So, to answer your question, no, we never okay. thought of it as an exit stair. Yeah, I'm just thinking, like in mall buildings, you see the smoke curtain, you see these escalators that go for 10 miles. Yeah. You know, and there's features that you put in place to, you know, mitigate smoke control and fire and stuff like that. Closely spaced sprinklers, stuff like that. I mean, it, if, if there are ways to enhance uh, the safety measures and, and keep the stair the way it is, we would be entertain. We'd entertain all of them. Uh, head six feet on center, additional smoke baffle. We would do all that stuff. You know, part of the reason we leaned towards this product as a, a jack of all trades is that allowed us to eliminate some of that stuff. We didn't need to do the extra uh, heads and the extra smoke baffle because this curtain took care of that. It's great. You know, the, the purpose of a smoke baffle to prevent smoke from billowing up and working its way up the building sort of becomes moot if you're going to have a curtain that's going to drop down from floor to ceiling. But if for some reason it makes sense to have one, because I don't know, maybe it's a preactive measure that before the smoke gets kicked off and smoke gets caught behind the bath and before the curtain drops, that's something we've been detained. Usually we, we, uh, we hear the local fire officials weigh in. I don't know, has the county weighed in on what they're proposing? This product, are they endorsing it? Is it okay? Uh, you know, it's all on us. <laughs> the county, they, they got a notification of this hearing and uh, they had contacted the state earlier on. Isn't uh, Mr. Rabinowitz a uh, fire marshal? Yes, yes, he is. I recognize the name. Someone is here who is. Uh, I, I recognize the name. Yeah. Is yes. One yeah. He's a fire marshal at uh, National County. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Boat on Pilzak, B O H D A N P I L C Z A K, Captain Nassau County Fire Marshal's Office. Thanks for joining us today. You're welcome. Um, so we've been listening in, and our particular concern when this project was brought to us was merely the fact that this product was not tested. Uh, to the 10 D stand, I'm sorry, it was tested to the 10 D standard, but the current fire code of New York state in 2020 did not incorporate that as a reference standard. That was our primary concern. The secondary concern was that it did exceed, it went up to four floors. So it ex exceeded what we thought might've been the atrium requirement. Um, we took a look at 
all of the supporting documentation. We're not against the use of the product, but we just felt that the state needed to uh, agree that this would fit into the current 2020 fire code. Um, we listened uh, in, there was some uh, talk about the fire alarm system. As we understand it, a voice evac system is being put in, which can be programmed to uh, say anything you want. It could probably be programmed to say, you know, proceed to the nearest uh, stairway, emergency fire exit, do not use the common uh, stairway. Uh, so whatever they needed to say, I'm sure it could say. Um, the sprinkler system will be installed in the building. There will be a standpipe as well. So, like I said, we don't really have a uh, objection to the use of the product. We just felt that it needed to be accepted by the state because it's not in the current code. That's all. Have you looked at, uh, I assume you've reviewed the uh, sprinkler system design for the building and the a fire alarm system with the placement of smoke alarms, uh, smoke detectors. I mean, uh, are you okay with that uh, around this stairwell? Uh, you know what? I'm going to uh, bring the fire marshal that did the plan review or is uh, involved with the plan review. I'll let him speak on that. Yep. Good morning. My name is Keith Rabinowitz. E I T H R A B I N O W I T Z. Nassau County Fire Marshal 1. The fire alarm plans have been approved. The sprinkler plans with their standpipe system are in process of being approved. The only thing that's been approved on the uh, sprinkler side was the temporary standpipe that is currently scheduled to be tested. There is an issue with the water supply for the standpipe. The water is adequate for the sprinkler with an addition of a fire pump, but there is inadequate water to meet the requirements specified for the standpipe system at this time. How is that gonna be resolved? I believe Hofstra has proposed several things and I'll let them speak for how they intend to solve the problem. This is Richard Letty uh, from Hofstra University. Um, we had retained again Cameron Engineering to review hydrant flow tests in all of the hydrants that are in the immediate area from a number of water main sources. Um, they came up with two or three viable solutions and we are going to implement one of those solutions we're going to make a decision on that today one of the solutions that we're seriously considering was a system that was already approved by the town of Hempstead water department who would have jurisdiction on the underground water main and hydrant system um, so they've already reviewed this and approved it it has a cross connect over two separate water mains and a, and a hydrant. Um, it's just that during construction, there was some um, difficulties in getting to where we wanted to get to. So they suggested we go to another water main. We went ahead with that other water main, and then we did our flow tests afterwards, and they were inadequate for the design of this building. However, we're, we're very confident with the modeling that was done, and we're going to put in the new water main that we will be at or above the, the requirements for the flow. And going back to the fire marshals, uh, the plan reviewer, uh, you're okay with the, uh, well, I guess you haven't completed your review of the sprinkler system. That is correct. Atrium waiting or for stairwell. We are waiting for the uh, latest revision. The, the only plans on record were rejected, have been rejected. Uh, and smoke detectors, the placement of those? Uh, are sufficient. They are sufficient. I know with atrium, smoke detectors can be a problem because of the, typically the height of the atrium. Um, the 
it was more considered a, a continuous um, uh, communicating space. So the detection is there on each floor. Um, the fire alarm had sev- has uh, has several actuators appropriately as per their design to drop the curtains, but that was not um, communicated as to what those that 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 side of it was going to be when the plans were reviewed. At uh, these fire curtains, are you gentlemen going to ask for uh, enhanced sprinkler protection at those locations, or just a conventional coverage? With NFPA 13. NFPA 13 was that was what we were going with. Okay. Thank you, sir. Um, Mark and um, Andy, you guys have any questions? I know you're listening carefully. Uh, Mark, Mark, Kevin, I, um, I just have one question, but might follow up by a second question. So, if I understand correctly, these uh, rolling uh, curtains. Um, uh, and how they operate, why couldn't uh, you go with a fire shutter in those locations versus a curtain? Uh, two reasons. One was if we did a fire, the fire curtain obviously deploys from above, whereas the shutters usually uh, run on tracks and run horizontally. The way the stair is designed and the, the sort of openness of the stair to have it run horizontally on tracks like shutters, like you've seen commonly used in like shopping malls, for example, they need a place to house when they're in their in the uh, recoiled position. And the way the stairs designed, um, there was really not a, a convenient location to store the curtains in the recoiled position. We're leaning up against the exterior of the building, which is all curtain wall, so we obviously couldn't put it on that side. The other side of the stair opens up to corridors and circulation space, so we didn't want to put it on that side either. So uh, that that's the main reason. So so uh, I think you're speaking of like accordion style <clears throat> curtains as opposed to a, a roll up curtain or yeah, shutter, and, I should say. And they do make the roll up steel curtains, um, but to do that and to have the man door capability, you need a tremendous plenum height. Obviously, the door can't coil up the same way the curtain does, and we just don't have that plenum height, which is why we did the fabric. Which then follows up to my second question for the uh, fire marshal's office. Would the fire marshal's office be um, acceptable if they put a fire shutter in there without the man door, since there's always access from a floor above or below? Both. Uh, yes, so if I understand what you're saying is you be interested in using this fire curtain without that man door. Uh, we actually asked that question in a meeting with Hofstra and we would be okay with it because if you're within the stairwell, you have direct egress either out of the building or if you're on an upper floor to, I think it's like the third floor and then you can proceed to an emergency exit way, which was designed. So we wouldn't have an issue with that. Okay, thank you. I think that's all my questions for now. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Andy, you have any questions? Yeah. Um, so if you're inside that fire curtain, and uh, I would, I think it's on the second floor. Is there um, going to be an, maybe additional exit signs so that they know they can either go down the stair through the fire curtain or possibly across the second floor so that they. I'm just concerned about the people that are in that area. And also, um, I see on the example um, that there's an, a specific model that uh, that's being used, but not there's no model being for our for our case itself. I there are three different firefighter models. I was curious to know which one it is that you guys are proposing. I'm confused. So if you're you're in that you're in that second floor level. And the curtain drops and there are people that are sitting there. 
is there going to be an exit sign on the curtain and maybe an additional exit sign so that they can go out the second level instead of going down the curtain? I think you mentioned that before, Tom, right? That the exit curtain has the flap door has an exit. The flap door has an, door has an okay. So I, I just brought up the second floor plan. I don't know yeah. well you can see it. I don't know if there's a way we could increase the yeah. size a little bit. Kind of zoom in a little bit on the full floor and the areas adjacent around the curtain. So you can see in the yellow we have the automatic. <clears throat> we actually have it called that as 90 minute fire shutter, but it's actually three hours, <clears throat> excuse me, as per the UL 10D listing. You can see that it's got the dash shows the outline of the curtain, how it drops down. You can see there's the there's the little man door, which we're showing as looks like it's an actual door. It's really just a flap. But you can see when that curtain deploys and separates the stair area from the common corridor, the egress stairs in purple right there are still, you know, they're 10 feet away. The exit sign, which we're showing right out front, clearly indicates that. The exit signs in the corridor clearly indicate that. So if you're on the corridor side and the corridor and the curtain drops, mm -hmm. the exit stairs are right there. That's stair A, stair B is a little bit further away. And if you're inside the stair and the curtain drops, you can come right out through the man door, you'll pop out into the common corridor, and boom, just to your left is an exit sign showing you how to get to the stair A, which is your stair. Does that does that sort of answer your question? Yeah, I didn't see that detail earlier. So there's no man door at the common stairwell. So if there's a firefighter coming up that stairwell, they don't have access into that area unless they, that that was my concern, somebody going in either direction. There's only, there's only the one man door facing the corridor. Correct, correct. Someone coming up the stair would, would I don't want to say run into, but would, interface with the side of the curtain and the man door is then around to the other side. So the idea is that when the when this curtain drops, you know, we're uh, not encouraging people to obviously come up the building. We're encouraging people to egress the building. And I realize firefighters in theory could come up using this, but right. you know, typically they'll be using the two hour rate of stairs because that's why they're designed that way. That's what the standpipe is and that's two hour protected, et cetera. So my other question was, do you know which of the firefighting products that is being proposed? Because there are three different ones. I'm sorry, can you say which of the firefighting products are being proposed? Yeah. Um, oh, oh, on their which, website. which is the actual product? The yeah, they yeah, actually it's show. The, uh, it's the McKeon. Uh, it is the uh, D200E. Okay. In your exhibits, you have um, applications in other locations. Do you want to just put that on the record where maybe the same model or the same McKeon product has been used? Yeah, in the different one that applications. I personally, worked with is at the Ford Foundation. Ford Foundation is pretty well known by their name, but they're a nonprofit in New York City. They have an 11 story atrium um, in a landmark building in uh, 42nd Street and between 1st and 2nd Avenue. Uh, I could pull up some images. And what we needed to do is because I've worked on this project for a long time, it's a rather signature project, so I can bore you to tears with the history, especially since you're an architect. But it's a very well received and well respected landmark historic building. It was literally the first atrium in New York City history. It was built on the 38 building code, which didn't even have atrium in its definition, which is an indicator of how old this building is, but it was an atrium that was designed before atrium had any uh, code language associated with it between separation of use and fire protection and smoke purge and all that. So what we needed to do was make it code compliant by today's standards because it was completely renovated about four years ago. So we used this product on the 11th and 12th floor as a two hour barrier uh, separating the atrium from the rest of the project. Um, how large was that? That application, uh, the length of the curtain ran the entire length of the atrium on 2 sides. Uh, total length was probably around 300 feet. If I'm gonna guess. And there's no limitations to how. How long I was it? It doesn't 
degrade in ability to, you know, structural integrity? Nope. Like the, the, that's the, the beauty of the fabric is that you don't have the rigidity of maybe of, of the, you know, the metal steel systems. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's all sewn together in one large continuous product. It's got a weighted hen bar that drops down onto the ground. Uh, and it's locked in much like the same product we're using here. It's got a jam condition where it drops in on the jam. The jam's two hour rated. It sits in a two hour rated assembly, drops to the ground, and it maintains that two hour assembly all the way through. One thing to note if you'll see it in the report is the UL 10D listing is a uh, positive pressure test as opposed to a neutral test, which my experts in McKeon tell me that's a much more stringent test and more depicting uh, a real life scenario. Um, because obviously you're going to have different pressure differential in a real building as opposed to a negative one, which is what the UL 10B listing is. That's part of their um, argument that this is, exceeds the UL 10B listing as a, as a criteria. And then it's motorized. What happens if the power, is it high back of power? Was it dropped by gravity? I, I believe it's tied into. I believe it's tied into a backup battery, but I will double check that. Okay. Oh, there we go. Right. are we clear on? I'm not sure I'm clear. Are we clear on the definition of the fire barrier or an opening protective? Because I mean, you read it before, but uh, Palin was talking to me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the provision in 717 that allows, allows you to use um, well, 10 B other standards that that is in the section that talks about opening protective. So it's not a fire barrier. It, it may be an alternative to a fire barrier, but it's not a fire barrier as defined in the code. Um, it could serve as a smoke protection curtain, a smoke curtain, but a fire barrier is required for the enclosure of an atrium. And the, the allowance, what I'm saying is the allowance for those kinds of protectives are in the opening protective mm -hmm. report, uh, provision of the code, 716. And 716 has a stipulation I don't know how we get around that, except through a variance, that there is a minimum prescribed opening for an open protector. I think the number is 156 square feet. 156. Like a, a maximum. A maximum of 156 square feet. Thanks. What are the areas of these two fire curtains? Uh, way over. Can you just? Um, on the second floor, it goes floor to ceiling. The ceiling height, I believe, is 10 feet um, from linear length. They're L shape and configuration. Uh, if I were to give you a total linear footage on the second floor, 40 feet, maybe 25 feet in one direction and 15 feet in the other. And the third floor is probably something similar. So 400 square feet and yeah. the second floor. I mean, take, I, mean I, I could try and do a very, very quick takeoff if you want me to get into something a little bit more accurate. Um, so the whole continuity aspect of the definition of fire barrier, I mean, interpretation ultimately falls to the local and then we can do our own. Um, we, but we don't know what the local, how the local views this is a fire barrier or an opening protective. I think that's where I'm kind of hung up because I view it differently then. Then I got to look at the area, in my opinion. I'm looking at the, your 
twice the permitted size of an opening protective. I, I, which are three hours. So, in my mind, this is Andy Haynes. Uh, we're not looking at an opening protective. We're looking at you're qualifying this retractable product as a fire barrier or a fire curtain, with the exception of the continuity, but that that would require the variance. Con well, that's a definition. So the yeah. continuity is in place if there's a fire event or some it, emergency it, event. Yeah. It comes down and it the continuity is there. Right. It's just the whole retractable act aspect and the definition is that somewhat interpretive. Or, um, or no. You see a black and white? The board the board can accept an alternative to a fire barrier if they think this is equivalent. Yeah. Now, I personally don't believe it's an equivalent of the fire barrier. The fire barrier is it's there permanently. But, um, you know, if the board believes that it is a, a viable equivalent uh, or it mimics uh, the same properties as a fire barrier, uh, the board could decide. Or to, provides know, the same protection. It provides a similar protection, yes. The, um, you know, the board would have to decide whether it functions in an atrium similarly as fire barrier would. And so, okay, well, thank you for that. Um, any other questions? I've exhausted mine on my list. Yes. <laughs> okay. You guys good up there? Any more questions? I'm good. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we're going to go talk this out and we'll be back and render a vote. So you leave her here. If you don't mind. <laughs> 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 kind of glued to the seat here. <laughs> anybody else? Oh, yeah. Is there anybody else that wants to speak on behalf or opposed to the application? Okay, good job today. One last thing I just yes, wanted to, to mention this is Rich Lighty again. Um, we did submit a letter to the um, the local building department who issued our permit for this building and they did accept this particular product uh, and they uh, believe that it it is it is definitely a, 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 a meets the uh, requirements of the building codes in their interpretation so they're in favor of the granting of the variance is that well they they the grant record? this permission to proceed okay. based on our documentation which is similar to what you see in front of you okay that was shared with them and then they, they responded back and said yeah, this product is good they called me yesterday they said they couldn't be at this hearing but they said that we they they're confident we have a very strong case mm -hmm. so we typically have a ceo questionnaire uh, did they fill it out or uh, no no okay I, I have one more question uh, would it make sense uh, and I'll ask this to the architects and fire marshals. Uh, would it make sense to have a time delay between the fire alarm going off and this curtain dropping to allow people to get off the stairs? That question maybe is more to the fire marshals. Are they still? And then the stair goes to the slide. This, all the treads come out of these <laughs> Hey, that's a good idea. I'm like, oh, yeah. 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 Get the hell out of there. Put a curve at the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is Keith yeah. Rabinowitz again. Yeah. Um, just to, to clarify, my understanding of the curtain was that upon fire alarm activation, it is a slow moving. So I don't believe a further delay would be beneficial. Yeah. But I, uh, they could clarify how long that 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 slow speed really is to clarify for everybody's uh, information. Mr. Rabinowitz is correct. It is slow deploying. I don't know the exact number, but it's something like a foot every fifteen seconds. So, like I said, it doesn't drop like a guillotine. Yeah. It slowly it comes back down. Slowly. It takes, yeah. I don't know, maybe minute for the entire thing to drop two minutes or something like that i could look into seeing if, if 
if that's a viable option to put it on some sort of a delay, um, we'll see what that would entail. It can't be lifted up and crawl underneath, can it? I mean, something that 40 feet. It, it's it's pretty heavy. And the head bar is weighted yeah. to do exactly yeah. what it's meant to do. It's to resist you know, pressure and heat and gas. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you do have the door to get out. You have the door I'm to get out. with people on the way to, down yeah. getting uh, stuck halfway. You know, it's, it's halfway yeah. down. There's still people trying to get out, sitting mm -hmm. on the head. Or, you know, the fire department just going to pick an axe. <laughs> <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> All right. I think we right. uh, we got enough. So, uh, yeah, we're going to go deliberate and uh, we'll call you back in. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, gentlemen. Thank you. So, gentlemen, we were kicking around this uh, concern about the occupied portions of the stair, what we call that social stair, mm -hmm. which is essentially the first floor <clears throat> and the second floor. We're concerned about once these things deploy, that whoever's ever on this occupied stair is going to be corralled to get out that one exit. So, um, would you be amenable to treating a portion like a hybrid approach where a portion of the upper stair is treated like an exit access stairway? We have closely spaced sprinklers and some kind of draft curtain, and then we would remove the second floor fire curtain from the project and only do it at the third floor. So then anybody that's on those levels can completely evacuate, and then it would essentially be what a three story atrium. Then yes, you'd be granting a variance on a three story atrium with the proper fire barriers and this McKeon product, and then um, up above that you'd have the uh, conventional exit access compliance stairway. Is that? That's certainly something that we, we okay. can do. Yeah. There, um, there. I think, uh, are we talking about all four floors would have to have the smoke barriers and the uh, enhanced sprinkler protection? Or is no. it only the second floor where we're removing the curtain? I'm going to defer to my technical staff, but I think it would be the first and second floor would have the closed yeah. space sprinklers and the, and the uh, baffles. Well, at, well, this, you need at this point, it would only be the floor above the first floor, the opening above the first floor, that would um, mm -hmm. need the barrier because above that could be the fire curtain. Right. This is at San that we for visual people. So we're just going to show you on the screen, and Tom can run his cursor along. Recommendations. Well, the, these are just suggestions by the board. Um, you know, these are not evaluated by any kind of engineering standard. Yeah, you guys are the experts, and um, you know, you tell us if this is a viable yeah. suggestion. So the, the thought is to deploy the curtain between on the third floor, right? Eliminate the one on the second floor, right? Yeah. And add enhanced protection in the form of closely spaced heads on floor opening between first floor and the second floor. And yeah. also the second floor to the third floor, or just the first floor to the second. Yeah. No, also on the second floor. Second floor. Second floor. Second floor. Second floor. Second floor. Enhanced sprinkler. Protecting the, the uh, atrium opening. Got it. So it's enhanced sprinkler heads in the plenum of the first floor and in the plenum of the second floor and eliminate the second floor curtain. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So essentially, in accordance with the code, the 1019.3, which would be in some condition. That you need to comply with that requirement as an exit access stair. And then eliminate that one um, McKeon product and allow people to just flow and evacuate and then have the exit access conditions above that. I think that's eminently doable. Yeah. Okay. At this point, construction, yeah, that is a, a very, very viable option okay. that we can pursue. There, there might still be, uh, you know, further mitigating factors that we would decide on potentially conditions, but 
we just wanted to run that by you to see because it is a hybrid approach from what you proposed. And if uh, you know if you were opposed or couldn't pull it off, you know then you know we'd be in a different situation. So yeah, no, I think that's that's okay. easily taken. All right, so uh, we're going to draft something up and pull you back in. Sure. All right. Thanks, Joe. Okay, got a lot of reading to do, so bear with, bear with me. Okay, we get the boys from up in Albany. Uh, the voters need to be seen. So, Mark and Andy, you guys on board? Yep. Yep. Okay. So back on the record, with respect to petition number 2023-0195, did I do something wrong? Did you start recording here? Are we recording? Um, are we recording, Lola? Yes. Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. With respect to petition number 2023-0195, uh, Hofstra University, the petitioner seeking relief from 19 NYCRR Part 1221, the 2020 Building Code of New York State, Section 404.5. Exception, should I read the exception? I don't need to. 19 NYCRR Part 1221, the 2020 Building Code of New York State, Section 404.6. 19 NYCRR Part 1221, the 2020 Building Code of New York State, Section 707.6. And 19 NYCRR Part 1221, the 2020 Building Code of New York State, Section 716.1.1. The board moves the following findings. Number one. The atrium under consideration is not the typical vertical atrium, but is angled to follow the rake of the grand open stairway that connects the first to the fourth floors of the subject building. Number two, the grand stairway is visible from the exterior as an architectural is an, an architectural centerpiece of the construction. Number three, section four or four point five of the BCNYS requires a smoke control system. Simplified rational analysis used for typical atriums anticipate an axisymmetric smoke plume. It may be difficult to design a smoke control system for the inclined configuration of the floor openings without extensive modeling. Number four, the petitioner proposes to avoid designing for smoke control by providing a barrier that limits anticipated smoke development to two stories as allowed by exception, section, exception to section 404.5 of the BCNYS. Section 404.6 of the BCNYS prescribes fire barriers or, or horizontal assemblies to accomplish this. Number five, use of code compliant fire barriers would interrupt the open concept of the four story stairway. Number six, the petitioner wishes to utilize fire curtains manufactured by McKeon. This product is described and evaluated in Intertex Code Compliance Research Report, CCRR 0455. The curtains appear to conform to the UL 10C and are allowed by section 716.2.2.1.1 of the BCN, BCNYS for smoke and draft control in smoke barriers and corridor doors for 20 minute opening protectors. The petitioner has stated that the fire curtain also conforms to UL 10D. Number seven, the curtains in a normal position are proposed to be recessed into the ceiling surrounding the stairway floor openings at the second and third floors. These curtains will be deployed upon activation of the co compliant fire alarm system to create a smoke barrier that will limit smoke dispersal via the vertical openings to a maximum of two communicating floors. Number eight, the board is concerned with the fire curtain on the second floor, potentially entrapping occupants on the stairway gathering space at the level at that level and believes this fire curtain at the second floor could be eliminated to avoid this risk. Number nine, a fire barrier is defined in the code as a fire resistance rated wall assembly of materials designed to restrict the spread of fire in which continuity is maintained. The proposed fire curtains are not considered equivalent to a fire barrier because they do not meet the requirement in the definition to maintain continuity as a wall assembly. However, the board feels that the fire curtain on the third floor is an acceptable alternative in this case. 10, the proposed drop down fire curtains exceed the maximum 150 square foot requirement of section 707.6 of the BCNYS for co-compliant opening protectives. Number 11, exception four of section 1019.3 of the 2020 Building Code of New York State allows an egress stairway that intercommunicates with more than two stories. Compliance with this provision of the code 
would require the installation of closely spaced sprinklers and draft curtains. So with respect to 19 NYCRR part 1221, section 404.5, section 404.6, section 707.6, section 716.1.1, board finds strict compliance with the provisions to the Uniform Fire Prevention and Building Code would entail practical difficulties and or unnecessary hardship and would be unnecessary in light of alternatives, which ensure the achievement of the code's intended objective or in light of alternatives, which without loss in the level of safety, achieve the code's intended objective more efficiently, effectively, or economically. And the granting of this variance will not substantially adversely affect the uniform code's provisions for health, safety, and security. So wherefore it is determined that the application for variance from the provisions of 19 NYCRR part 1221, section 404.5, 404.6, 707.6, .6, and 716.1.1 be and is hereby proposed to be granted with the following conditions. Condition one, that the McKeon product model D200E shall be installed at the third floor level only. Number two, that the closely spaced sprinklers and draft curtains in accordance with exception four of section 1019.3 of the 2020 Building Code of New York State and NFPA 13 shall be installed at all other stairway floor openings. Number three, that the directional signage shall be installed at the third floor indicating paths to the two existing enclosed exit stairways when the McKeon product is deployed. Number four, that a voice evacuation system be integrated into the fire alarm system to provide direction to the code compliant enclosed exit stairways as acceptable to the Nassau County Fire Marshal. Number five, that the McKean fire curtain shall be provided with emergency power backup. Number six, that the petitioner shall consult with a fire protection engineer to ensure that the proposed smoke mitigation strategies throughout the building provide a tenable environment. And number seven, that in all other respects, the applicable provisions of the uniform code shall be complied with. Need a motion to approve with these conditions? Andy, so move. Yeah, get a second. Pending second. Uh, anybody, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All in favor? Motion is approved with these conditions. Um, furthermore, it should be noted that the decision of this board is limited to the specific building and application before it is contained within the petition and should not be interpreted to give implied approval of any general plans or specifications presented in support of this application. I don't think I heard the gen uh, be approved. Andy and Mark, did I, uh, you guys approve? Both of you guys? Yay. Okay, I didn't hear. Okay. Both you guys? Andy? And I. Okay, thank you. I just want to make sure. Okay, guys, you get that with the seven conditions? Obviously, we're going to get a copy of that. I think you can get the minutes too if you want. Yeah, great. Uh, hey, that's terrific. I'm thrilled. Okay, wonderful. We'll start immediately on making the uh, modifications that comply with the uh, variance resolution. Okay, I think we're looking like what four to six weeks usually. Yeah, to get a written decision. Correct. Right. Yeah, no. and then work with your team and the fire marshal and get to the finish line. Wonderful. All right, guys. Good luck with your project. Thanks. Thank you. It's great. Good job today. Thank you. Thank you. Great job up there, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Maybe we'll see you again next month. Thank you. <laughs> see, Thank see you. you. Yeah, we have Erica. Uh, Thanks, Please work. Thank you. Nice to meet you today, right? Thank you guys. This is great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. This is great.